welcome back to Yaza channel. Uh, today we're gonna work on this Yamaha Sidewinder uh, 2018. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about the handlebar riser. How important is the riser? Very important. My current riser here is six inch and it's stock and it does not fit me. And how do I know that? Well, every time I ride, look at my hands, they're fully extended. It sort of jerks, jerks on the arms and pulls and it's not right and my position is not correct on it because of it. What we need to do is we need to make sure our elbows are somewhat uh, somewhat bent when we stand nice and tall. We have to wear our gear. So for example, let's let's take a look here. Not in my gear, but I'm, I'm standing here. And look at the wheel, it's too short. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna increase it by two inches. I got a power mat pivot riser here I'm gonna install. We're gonna walk through it, it's really simple. All you need for this installation is a star key, it's a T40 and a 10 millimeter wrench. We'll walk through the process. And uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna ride it this weekend and find out if it's better. I had really tough time side healing on this thing. I couldn't find a balance point. And I think my riser is part of the issue. So we're gonna find out if it's true or not. Stay tuned. Not sure if you can really see it, but what needs to happen here is the riser needs to be um, parallel to the shaft comes any less or more of an angle then you'll have an issue of feedback in the handlebars. The first thing to do is align the riser with the shaft and then watch height if the height is proper or not. Note here guys, uh, before screwing it out completely, I checked if the cables are gonna reach. Looks like with eight inch rise, you don't have to do any kind of extension right now. Not, not that I can see it. The brake line's good, uh, wiring is good, and the cable is good. Another important point piece of information is you want your uh, riser bar to be held by the brackets equally so uh, you have to measure one side and the other side and make sure that they're approximately the same. The same goes true for any kind of handlebars and bicycles, motorcycles for the bracket to hold it uh, correctly. Another point I'd like to bring out right now is that you want your riser to be centered on the shaft uh, right in the middle like it's supposed to be. Same goes for the handlebar. You want it to be right in the center. In my case, there's mark from the original brackets and that's where I'm gonna align it to. You want everything to be balanced. You cannot overlook this. How your riser sits and how your body is positioned on a snowmobile makes a huge difference on your ride, whether you're in control of your sled or not. So don't, don't miss this adjustment. You don't wanna make a huge mistake on trying to learn to control your snowmobile when it's not properly set for you. So before we tape everything down, what we wanna do is we wanna turn the wheel to the left, we wanna turn right, make sure make sure there's no uh, pulling on, on the cords too much, and tape them appropriately. The cable line can still sit in the front, and the wire is fine. When I stand on it, in the aggressive stand, my elbows are bent. It feels much better, so I can't wait to find out how it actually rides. Again, we're gonna finish it off with some nice lift ties. We don't want the electric cord to be on the loose, so it doesn't get caught on anything. And I'm gonna try to find a neutral position for it. And that's gonna sum up our job. Remember guys, adjusting your sled at home 
will uh, give you a more pleasant ride on the hills. You don't want to be adjusting it on the mountains. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I got more videos coming, updates, and see how this thing rides. The more you can have your sled adjusted or tailored to your body, your height, style of driving, uh, mountain riding, the funner it's gonna be, the more you can do, the more comfortable you're gonna be, the less energy you're gonna waste. Because uh, if you can't use the correct technical skills, you're gonna waste a lot of energy instead of using the power of the sled to churn, you're gonna be using your muscles. And the less tired you get, the more you can enjoy it. You can ride another day.